Today we will talk about an important method that's used for the non-homogeneous differential equations. Uh, this method is called the superposition method. It can be handy in um, some situations where you have on the right hand side of the equation two or three functions of x that needs to be solved. So we will learn more about how to apply the superposition method uh, during your solution. Um, for the superposition, we have a general form of equations that can apply um, for the superposition method. Um, you can have y double prime plus p of x y prime plus q of x y equals function f1 of x plus f2 of x now let's say y of j is a solution for this equation so from that we can say y prime plus p of x y prime plus q of x multiplied by y equals f of j of x if that's the case like y of j is solution for this equation then we can say y1 plus y2 plus etc up to yn is a solution for this equation that may sound unclear but as usual we will try to explain the concept of superposition using a practical example okay in our example in here so you have a problem y double prime plus 4 multiplied by y equals x plus 2 multiplied by e to the power of minus 2x now this equation we need to treat it as two separate equations let's say this part is equation number one we're just assuming here for the sake of clarification and this part combined with this part is equation number two let's write that on the side so equation number one looks like y double prime plus four multiplied by y equals x that's the first non-homogeneous equation that we want to solve on the side second equation y double prime which is the same as the left hand side of the equation plus 4 multiplied by y equals 2 to the power multiplied by e to the power of 2x so we have two non-homogeneous equations we want to solve them with the traditional methods that we learned previously okay let's start solving equation number one as we remember we assume the left hand side to be the only components of the equation we are assuming that equation to be homogeneous and this solution since the left hand side for equation one of and two are the same we can assume this solution applies for both equations number one and two in terms of the homogeneous solution okay now um, we can say lambda squared plus 4 equals 0. In this case, the solution for this equation, lambda 1 and 2 equals plus or minus 2i. 
Okay. As we remembered, since we have complex roots for our equation, um, the homogeneous solution can be represented in terms of alpha and beta, which are the terms of the complex solution. So this will be C1 cosine 2x multiplied, I mean plus C2 sine 2 of x or sine 2 multiplied by x. So this is our homogeneous solution that applies for equations 1 and 2. Okay, how about the particular solution for equation number 1? Yp, which is particular solution, we said we will look at the right-hand side of the equation. In this case, we look at the x. If we use the undetermined coefficient method, we can say y of p equals cx and y prime of p equals c and y double prime of p equals zero. If we substitute that into um, equation number one, y double prime equals zero. So we are looking here right now. Plus four multiplied by y, in this case, cx. So four cx equals x. Now, x and cx can be gone, compensated by one. From that, we can say c equals one over four. Then we can say the particular solution for this equation. So we say the particular is cx. C, we know right now it's one over four. So it is one over four x. So this is the particular solution for equation number one, right? All right, we don't need this. Okay, so that's one. We know now the general solution for equation one is the y particular and the y homogeneous. So we have the half of the solution for the main equation. Now let's go for equation number two and try to solve it in the same manner. Equation number two in homogeneous term, so y homogeneous two is the same as y homogeneous one, which we found earlier in here, um, which is c1 cosine 2 of x plus c2 sine 2 of x. Now y particular, oops, y particular for equation number 2 equals, we have on the right hand side for equation number 2 is 2 multiplied by e to the power of minus 2x. We will replace it with c based on the undetermined method, undetermined coefficient method, e to the power of minus 2x, which is c multiplied by e to the power of minus 2x. Let's find y prime. In this case, it equals minus 2c multiplied by e to the power of minus 2x and y double prime equals 4, plus 4 of course, c e to the power of minus 2x. Now put these back in equation number 2. We can say um, in equation number 2, 
So knowing that, we can say, um, after compensating in that equation, you have 8C equals 2, from that, C equals 1 over 4. If you get the C back in the Y particular 2, so you can say that the particular solution for equation number 2 will be 1 over 4 multiplied by e to the power of minus 2x. That's the particular solution for equation number 2. Okay, now we're ready um, to say that the grand particular solution for equations number 1 and 2 are 1 over 4 multiplied by x plus 1 over 4 multiplied by e to the power of minus x. So now we can say the grand solution for the main equation uh, in terms of x equal the y homogeneous for both equations plus y particular. Since y homogeneous for both equations is the same and y particular is consisting of yp1 and yp2, this will give you the grand solution to be c1 cosine 2 of x plus c2 sine 2 of x plus y particular 1, which was 1 over x, I mean 1 over 4, multiplied by x, plus y particular 2, which is 1 over 4, multiplied by e to the power of minus 2x. And this is the grand solution for your main equation using the superposition method. As simple as that.